Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you an example of how to use a z-table, otherwise known as a standard normal table, as I find the best way to learn how to use a z-table is through an example. I should note that a link to the material shown in this video can be found in the description and comment sections below. There are many uses of a z-table, and in this video, I'll show you how a z-table is useful to compare how one value compares to other values in a normal or nearly normal distribution. I'll also show you how a z-table allows you to compare two scores from different normal or nearly normal distributions. So in this example, I'll read it, then I'll go through it. So Zoe scored a 25 on her ACT. Mike scored an 1150 on his SAT. Which of the two test takers scored better on the respective tests? What proportion of people scored worse than Zoe and Mike? Assume both tests have a nearly normal distribution. The first thing to take away from this question is that we have two nearly normal distributions. ACT scores have a mean of 20 and a standard deviation of 4. SAT scores have a mean of 1000 and a standard deviation of 150. To be able to utilize a z-table, we have to turn these normal distributions into standard normal distributions, which means that we have to make these distributions have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. This is called standardization, which is pretty easy to do with the following formula. z equals x minus mu over sigma, where mu is the mean and sigma is the standard deviation. X in this case are the scores that Zoe and Mike had. So with this formula, we can now calculate Zoe's and Mike's z-scores. So for Zoe, she had a score of 25 minus the mean for that year, which was 20. And this is all divided by the standard deviation of four. This means that Zoe has a z-score of 1.25. We can also do a calculation for Mike, and it's the same thing, and this leads to Mike having a z-score of 1.0. Since Zoe has a higher z-score than Mike, we can conclude that Zoe performed better on her test. And while we know Zoe performed better, a z-score, sorry, a z-table can tell us in what percentile the test takers are in. And we can do this with the following partial z-table. And the values in this table are just the area underneath the curve to the left of our z-score table, or to the left of our z-score. And this is also known as the probability. Z-tables are generally laid out like so, where the labels for rows contain the integer part and the first decimal of our z-score. And the label for columns contain the second decimal of z. So for Zoe, who had a z-score of 1.25, we start at the row label of 1.2, we find where it intersects the column label of 0 0.05, and we find the probability of 0.8944. This is the proportion of people who scored worse than Zoe, 0.8944. We can do something similar for Mike, and we start at the row label of 1.0, we find where it intersects with the column label of 0, 0.00, and we find that the proportion of people who scored worse than Mike is 0.8413. So in this example, it's really important to keep in mind that it's possible to have a negative z-score, and if you come across that, you simply use a table that contains negative z-scores. And I'll leave a link to um, this z-table in the link below, in the comments and description section below. Um, that's it for this tutorial. If you are curious, the blog post I'm currently showing you has a section on how to create your own z-table. I really warn you that it is very heavy in math, but having said that, let me know if you have any questions. And that's it. Thanks. Bye.